A strong earthquake jolts the province of Ilocos Norte Monday morning. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology says the magnitude 5.6 tremor struck at 10.56 a.m. The movement in the Manila Trench likely caused the strong quake in the Ilocos region. Beneath the seemingly calm surface of the South China Sea, something ancient stirs. It doesn't roar. It doesn't flash. It whispers in silence, locked beneath thousands of feet of ocean, waiting for a moment that will change everything. This is the story of the Manila Trench, a monstrous scar in the Earth's crust that stretches more than 600 miles from southern Taiwan to the heart of the Philippines. You won't see it on vacation maps. Most people have never even heard of it, but scientists, they see it for what it truly is, one of the most dangerous seismic zones on the planet. Unlike the familiar stories of fault lines in California or Japan, this one is a megathrust, an underwater giant capable of ripping apart continents and launching tsunamis taller than buildings. And right now, it's quiet, too quiet. That kind of silence isn't peace, it's pressure. Decades, maybe centuries of it, building invisibly beneath the sea, just waiting to break loose. At the heart of the danger is a geological tug of war between two enormous tectonic plates. The Eurasian plate is being shoved beneath the Philippine Sea Plate, a process known as subduction. It sounds slow and dull, moving just two to three inches per year, about the speed your fingernails grow. But don't let that fool you. Every inch is energy, and the plates aren't gliding smoothly. They're stuck, locked, and with every passing year, they store more and more pressure, like a bowstring being drawn back, tighter and tighter. When it finally snaps, it won't be a gentle release. It'll be a catastrophic jolt. And what's worse, the Manila Trench hasn't ruptured in centuries. In seismic terms, it's overdue. We're not talking about a magnitude 6 or 7 earthquake here. We're talking about the potential for something in the magnitude 9 range, a quake so powerful it would instantly lift parts of the ocean floor by more than 30 feet. And when the seafloor moves, the ocean above it follows. Billions of gallons of water displaced in a single moment will surge outward like a beast unchained. That's the nightmare scientists are racing to understand, a nightmare rooted in cold, hard geology. The signs are already here. Along the western coast of Luzon, coral terraces, natural stone platforms formed by centuries of coral growth have been pushed upward by massive earthquakes in the past. Some have risen by as much as 10 feet in one violent motion. Radiocarbon dating reveals that such massive ruptures have occurred every 400 to 600 years. The last one? Possibly as far back as the 1600s. That puts us squarely in the danger zone. But unlike Japan, which has a detailed seismic record stretching back centuries, the Philippines has limited historical data. Much of the evidence lies in fragmented oral traditions, vague colonial era accounts, and the silent, hardened layers of coral. This lack of data makes it harder to predict the next rupture. But it doesn't mean the danger is any less real. In fact, it makes it worse, because it's harder to prepare for a threat you can't see clearly. And this threat is massive. A rupture of the Manila Trench wouldn't just affect the Philippines. It could send shockwaves, both literal and figurative, throughout Southeast Asia. Imagine the moment of rupture. Deep beneath the ocean, a fault line that has remained locked for hundreds of years suddenly gives way. A section of the Earth, stretching hundreds of miles, lurches violently. The sea bottom lifts by dozens of feet in seconds, and then the water above it is thrown into chaos. Within minutes, a towering tsunami would be racing toward the coast of Luzon, Subic, Dagupan, Zambales, even parts of Metro Manila, all within striking distance. And the clock? It's merciless. In some areas, residents would have just 10 to 15 minutes to get to higher ground. No time to pack, no time to think, just run. But it doesn't end at the Philippine shoreline. That wall of water would keep moving, stretching outward across the South China Sea, aimed squarely at the densely populated coasts of Vietnam, southern China, Hong Kong, Macau, and Malaysia. In as little as two to four hours, it could strike again. 
Tsunami models suggest wave heights of 10 meters or more in the Philippines, with smaller but still deadly waves hitting other nations. To put that in perspective, 10 meters is a three-story building of water moving at the speed of a jetliner. And these waves don't break like surf. They crush. They erase. The impact on human life could be devastating. Tens of millions live in low-lying coastal areas with little to no warning systems in place. The loss of life wouldn't just be massive, it could be unimaginable. And the chaos wouldn't stop at human lives. This region is an economic superhighway, a logistical lifeline for global trade. Ports in Hong Kong, Shenzhen, and Ho Chi Minh City, essential hubs for tech, manufacturing, and shipping could be destroyed or paralyzed. Factories would shut down, ships rerouted, supply chains shredded. You might not live anywhere near the South China Sea, but you'd feel the shockwaves in your wallet. That smartphone upgrade? Delayed. That grocery bill? Spiking. The stock market? Tumbling. And while emergency services scramble to rescue survivors, governments would be navigating something even more complicated, a geopolitical minefield. The South China Sea is already a hotspot of tension, a chessboard of territorial disputes involving China, the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, and more. Now imagine that same ocean suddenly filled with naval ships conducting rescue missions, aid organizations trying to coordinate across conflicting borders, and desperate civilians fighting to survive. The result would be chaos, a swirling storm of humanitarian crisis and international tension. The region could quickly shift from contested waters to an all-out logistical and diplomatic battleground. And here's the haunting truth. We're not ready. In the Philippines, the agency FIVOCAS has made major strides, installing GPS monitors, running earthquake drills, and expanding seismic networks. But they still lack one of the most critical tools in early detection, deep sea pressure sensors and seafloor seismometers. These are the eyes and ears that could catch the earliest signs of tectonic strain before it explodes. Japan has been lending a hand with data and technology, but regional coverage remains full of blind spots. Other countries along the trench, Vietnam, Malaysia, parts of China, are even further behind. Many coastal towns don't have sirens, warning systems, or even basic evacuation plans. Some communities aren't even aware a threat exists. And perhaps most terrifying of all, there is no unified tsunami warning system for the South China Sea. None. Which means millions of people are at the mercy of a disaster that has no borders, no flags, no favorites. And in that terrifying silence, the Manila Trench continues to hold its breath. It hasn't ruptured. Yet. But the pressure is still building. The Earth is sending signals, but are we listening? Seismologists have been tracking slow slip events, silent movements along the fault that often precede major earthquakes. They've been detected along parts of the Manila Trench in recent years, as subtle as whispers but loaded with meaning. It's as if the Earth is stretching before it breaks. Smaller tremors have also been rattling the region, like the ones near Ilocos Sur and Ilocos North. But those quakes didn't come from the trench itself. They came from surrounding faults, deeper layers. That's not comforting. It's a warning, because it means the main rupture has not yet happened. It means the spring is still coiled, still holding back something far more powerful. And the science tells us this. The longer a mega thrust fault remains locked, the more destructive it will be when it finally slips. A future rupture could violently shift the seafloor across hundreds of miles in seconds, lifting the Earth vertically by up to 10 meters. That displacement would send an enormous wall of water hurtling toward the shore. And in that moment, there will be no time for debate, no time for second chances. This isn't just a regional threat, it's global. It affects the shipping routes that move the world's goods. It threatens the cities that produce our technology. It endangers millions of lives across cultural, political, and economic boundaries. And yet, it's being treated like a background concern. This is the time to act, to invest in offshore monitoring, to educate coastal communities, to build real, interoperable warning systems across borders. We have the tools. We have the research. What we lack is urgency. Because when the Manila Trench ruptures, and it will rupture, it won't send a calendar invite. It will send a shockwave. 
And that shockwave will test our resilience, our systems, and our humanity. We can either prepare now or regret forever. The silence from the trench isn't peace, it's pressure, a warning in geological code building with every passing day. The sea may look calm, the beaches may stay beautiful, but deep beneath that illusion, the earth is bracing. The question is no longer if, it's when. And when that moment comes, the only thing that will matter is whether we listened in time. So ask yourself, are we listening? Are we prepared? Or are we waiting for the water to speak first? If this video opened your eyes, hit that like button, drop a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe for more deep dives into the forces shaping our fragile world. Because this story isn't over, and neither is the silence.